Razer has to issue a recall for their RGB mask. The MSI Claw might be worth buying, and this 4070 is a little weird. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. It's the last day before we enter a new month. And we're gonna start off today talking about something that I long forgot about, which was Razer releasing an RGB mask during the pandemic. Turns out uh, they might have committed a little oopsie when they released this. And so they're gonna have to issue $1.1 million in refunds and a settlement payment to the Federal Trades Commission here in the US. And part of that is because in 2021, when Razer revealed this mask, they claimed that it actually had N95 capabilities for filtering out small particles to make sure that it was good for people to wear during the pandemic. That was the whole purpose of purchasing this $100 Zephyr mask. And as was quickly discovered once they started shipping these to people is that they were never certified to be N95 masks in the first place. This was found out by Naomi Wu, who who investigated and found that, yeah, these filters that were placed in the Zephyr had no N95 capabilities. That's despite Razer using that pretty much everywhere in their marketing material, making sure that whenever influencers talked about these masks, it said N95, it had it all over its website. And in response to this, Razer said that they would like to clarify that while the filters used in the Zephyr have been tested for 95% particulate filtration and 99% bacterial filtration, the wearable by itself is not a medical device nor certified as an N95 mask. And to avoid any confusion, they're gonna remove all references to the N95 grade filter. So it does appear that according to the FTC, they think that this was egregious enough to make sure that Razer gives money back to the customers who picked it up, especially if they were considering to wear it as a mask, I guess, if that's something you wanted to do. But they also have to pay a $100,000 civil penalty to the FTC with regards to all of this. I personally never bought one. I kind of consider this in the same exclusionary territory as like the Dyson mask, where it's like, who, who's really buying this besides for the novelty of it? But if you did buy it just because you thought it looked cool, not because you were using it to potentially keep you and your loved ones safe, uh, then uh, you, you uh, do, does, do you or a loved one have mesothelioma? You can get compensation now. And a lot of people who picked up the MSI Claw seem to want to have some compensation because they did not enjoy the device. That's what reviews seem to indicate. And we talked in last week's episode of Hot News that there was apparently a BIOS update that MSI released to make the device faster. But now there's a new driver update from Intel as well that's looking like it's increasing the performance of the device all around. MSI is claiming that up to 150% better performance in certain games, but it does look like a market increase across the board in a lot of very popular games going from 50 FPS in GTA 5 all the way up to 82.3. Some major improvements to potentially make the MSI Claw a little bit more appetizing. It has been 25% off in certain regions across the globe. Maybe one day it'll be featured on UFD Deals. Let's see if Reese has that for you. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, we've got some deals for you today, starting off with this Fractal Design Pop Mini Air Micro ATX case, available in white for only $59.99 making it $30 off and hey, it's what I'm rocking so we can be matchy matchy. And speaking of things that I'm rocking, the Apple Pencil second generation is down to only $79, making it $50 off. And for something I use on the daily and almost lose on the daily, that's a great price. And then lastly, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D processor down to a price match price of only $229. They dropped a little 99 cents just to undercut the competition there. But hey, those the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I'll tell you, it looks like Elon Musk thinks he's got a raw deal when it comes to his Twitter sitter who has to monitor his tweets on Tesla. And Elon's been so upset about this that he's been trying to appeal it, got all the way to the Supreme Court, and they have denied to hear this entire case, which means that the previous rulings on the previous appeals now stand and Elon Musk will still have to have his Twitter sitter of somebody from the SEC reviewing his tweets, which Elon Musk was saying forced him to waive his First Amendment rights to speak on matters ranging far beyond the charge violations. And this happened because Elon Musk tweeted out in 2018 that there was funding secured to take Tesla private, despite the SEC accusing him of not having discussed much less confirmed key deal terms, including price with any potential funding source. And he knew that he had not satisfied numerous additional contingencies. So the idea that it would actually have funding secured was not a 
real thing. And so the SEC fined him for it and made it so that he has to have Tesla tweets approved. And he doesn't like that because he owns the platform now. And that unfortunately didn't fix his whole issue. And this next story is not really an issue for anybody. It's just a neat little quinky dink that you find out sometimes that this weird GPU doesn't actually exist, but people are yet buying it anyways. An RTX 4070 was discovered to be made from a strange chip that Tech Power Up had never heard of before. Tech Power Up runs a GPU database where they're aware of all of the little bits and bobs that go into these processors that compute your graphics for your video games. And this new one, the MSI RTX 4070 Ventus 3X E 12 gigabyte OC graphics card had an AD103 chip instead of an AD104 chip. This means it was likely a defective RTX 4080 super chip instead of being made for the 4070 itself. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem in any kind. The GPU is going to perform exactly the same as a regular 4070, despite the fact that it is a cut down 4080 Super. We've seen this happen to GPUs all of the time. It's just one of the first times that I've seen that Tech Power Up has issued like an exclusive press release about, hey, we didn't know this graphics card existed. Nvidia never told us and we don't know why they're making it, but they are and it's not quite the same as when the RTX 2080 got cut down to be the RTX 2060 KO because the KO was technically slower than the regular 2060. So this isn't quite as bad as that. It's a similar situation, but the 4070 performance should be roughly the same. It's just a different GPU altogether. And you allegedly are different people altogether, but you look like text on a screen to me. But I want to get into comment response right now. We got the game bench saying, here's the problem with Intel throwing their board partners under the bus. They not not only condoned this in an interview with Dr. Ian Cutris, they said it was within spec. Regardless, this was within Intel's control. They could have stopped this years ago and chose not to because it only helped them out. It finally bit them in the booty, so they pass the Beck to the board partners. They gambled and lost. I assume that they're doing this so they can screw over people whose chips have degraded and refuse them a replacement. The game bench, I uh I agree with everything besides that last sentence i'm pretty sure uh this has gotten to be so big and from what i'm hearing behind the scenes this is very prominently in intel's like awareness of the entire market uh th they're not going to get away with refusing uh warranty claims and giving replacements if people are having these problems my guess is that intel already feels the pressure to do something about it and so i I agree with you on everything else. I think I've been pretty outspoken in that I think that Intel uh, blaming motherboard manufacturers is both correct, but also inexcusable in terms of the total picture of who's to blame here. I don't think they're doing this so that they can screw over people to not issue replacements. I think they're doing this uh, to make sure that the general market as a whole doesn't blame them because while you and I and everybody who watches hot news might be PC enthusiasts who are a little bit more informed, the average person just hears, oh no, Intel CPUs are dying. And then they hear, oh, it was the motherboard companies. Okay, nothing's wrong with Intel. Everything's fine. That That's likely why they're doing this. That would be my guess. And then we got Cove saying, Shintel, hey, board partners, please make that our CPUs win and benchmarks against Ryzen. I just, I, I, I'm not gonna read this whole comment. I just wanna comment on the the idea of calling them Shintel. I, I is that supposed to be like they're a uh, shill in Intel or that they're like crap in Intel? Because I'm just reading Shin, like, and I've never heard a Shin being derogatory before. Kyler, have you? Shin? Yeah, like it. Shinra? Shinra. Oh, or Shinji getting the robot. Probably not Shinji. Not Shinji? He's a, he's a little boy. Shinra. Shinra back. Yeah, Shinra is bad. Mm -hmm. Shinra tell. Is that what we're calling them now? Shinra tell. Shinra tell. <laughs> Try that on for size. And we got Archangel Ray saying, Brett, remember to consider the video card pricing across the multiverse and how much you are saving when purchasing in the Afla universe. I didn't realize that's what we're called. I, we're in the wrong universe, Kyler. We got to move. Then Cybertech says, no big loss with MSI. They have the worst low end models in the market. The Ventus is usually the measuring stick of the lowest price for and for good reason. Horrible cooler, bad contact, bad thermals. MSI isn't nearly on the level of EG. EVGA. I think most people would agree that a, the thing that set EVGA apart was build quality and customer service. Um, I don't think that's probably a requisite for NVIDIA to uh, give that supply to a different company. I uh, just... Then we got Jack saying, silly Brett, everyone knows stock isn't for motherboards. Stock is for soup. You like soup, right? You should know this. I'm... 
ignorant. Please excuse that. And then we got Cameron saying, for the GPU reviews videos, the difference in power costs really showed how little it mattered and only started to matter with high energy prices. The one nagging question I had from the video was, does that difference in wattage translate into a meaningful difference in heat output? I I don't, okay, that, that feels even like more pedantic than the interest rate thing, because like in order to understand the measurement of heat output into your environment like it, it's easily quantified 250 watts versus 200 watts you're outputting 50 watts more heat into the environment which is which is a 25 percent increase that is as a sizable difference however the thing is it does that matter to your entire house or uh, the room that you're living in. What temperature is the room? How big is the square footage in the cubic volume of the air? Because that's going to determine how much that extra 50 watts of heat gets to impact the environment around you. So for me to say this is going to really matter actually is uh, a another thing that can't be answered by a reviewer who's in a basement where it's freezing cold in the summer because the air conditioning's for all of the upper floors. And so it's 65 degrees down here in the summer and warmer in the winter. Uh, that extra 50 watts of heat is welcome in my book. So I don't know, would you buy a space heater that was 200 watts or 250 watts and think that it mattered a lot? I can't answer that. And I can't talk more because hot news is over. I'll be back here with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow for y'all, my friends. Goodbye.